Hi, my name is Will Perry and I'm going to be talking to you today about our project which was uh, looking at the population genetics of East African cichlids using Bayesian computation. Now, we were looking at cichlids in uh, Southeast Africa and this included the Lake Malawi catchment area as well as um, a bit further north into southern Tanzania. Now, this cichlid that you can see here is uh, Acetilapia calyptra. It's part of the haplochromine group, and it was our main outgroup that we used within the study, um, as it's found all the way across Lake Malawi and its catchment area. However, the important part was that we were also looking at two other cichlids. This, these were two ecomorphs found in a crater lake north of Lake Mazoko. This includes the littoral ecomorph, which you can see on the left, as well as the benthic ecomorph, as you can see on the right. So the littoral ecomorph is adapted to the littoral part of the lake, so the top half of the lake, and the benthic ecomorph is adapted to the bottom half of the lake. And so we were looking at how has, and, and these two benthic ecomorphs have diverged in sympatry, uh, it, it seems, within Lake Mazoko. And so we're looking at how that has occurred and how sympatry has been able to happen in Lake Mazoko. And so our aims were to look at uh, population genetics, but mainly on gene flow between Acetilapia calyptera as well as gene flow between the two ecomorphs with uh, Acetilapia calyptera, which we used as our sort of outgroup. So this was our sampling range. So as you can see, um, we that, well, uh, I should also point out that all of these samples and all of the whole genome data used in this study was produced by Nalinsky et al. in uh, 2015. And so we were using this data produced in a previous study that is available, uh, it's open source on the, the, the Dryad website. Um, and so each of these red pins shows a sample site and the number inside, well, as well as the purple pins, and the number inside the pins shows the number of samples taken at these sites uh, and the number of samples that we use for whole genome sequencing. So using next generation sequencing, uh, they were able to produce whole genomes for a, a huge, huge number of fish from a huge array of um, sample sites. And so as you can see, there was a huge sampling effort um, that we were able to uh, use and exploit in this study here. Now, the zoomed in map shows the, the Rungui uh, district, and this is where Lake Mazoko is found. So Lake Mazoko is uh, the crater lake where the two ecomorphs are found, uh, <clears throat> and it's about 700 meters in diameter, so it's a very small lake. Um, and it's found very close to the Mbarka River, which connects it to the, the wiser Lake Malawi catchment area. So the red pins show the presence of Astilapia calyptera. So all of the red pins and the numbers inside them show samples of Astilapia calyptera are outgroup. Whereas the purple pins show haplochromine endemic cichlids to uh, the particular crater lakes. So from Lake Mazoko, this 37 shows the number of littoral morphs and the number 32 shows the number of benthic morphs that uh, had their genome sequenced in the, the, the paper produced by Malinsky et al. And so as you can see, um, uh, Lake Mazoko, close to Embarker River, we didn't, well, I'm not going to concentrate on Lake Atamba here, but we did include some, some um, analysis of the whole genome data produced from Lake Atamba as well. But like I said, I won't be including that here. Main focus here is on Lake Mazoko, the sympatric speciation that has occurred there, and how these two ecomorphs have come about from the outgroup that is Astatilapia calyptera. So the main method that we used throughout uh, this project was it was a focus on Bayesian computation and the one method used to um, calculate the gene flow or the migration rate between uh, Lake Mazoko and the surrounding rivers or the Acetilapia calyptra was this process of expectation propagation approximate Bayesian computation 
which is quite a mouthful, um, but be, can be reduced to EPABC. And EPABC is very similar to normal ABC. So for you, those of you uh, not sure what ABC is, ABC, or Approximate Bayesian Computation, simply produces simulations um, based on prior knowledge of the system. So the prior knowledge of the system comes from this prior parameter that you can see on screen now. Um, the approximation in Approximate Bayesian Computation is done through how um, you summarize both your simulated data as well as how you summarize your observed data. So the way that you do this is through summary statistics and summary statistics will capture a lot of uh, the variation that you see within your observed data and your simulated data. If you pick a good summary statistic that is or if you have a good spread of summary statistics of course you can get that wrong. Um, but if you have the right summary statistics they will capture a good amount of variation but it will always be approximate. They won't capture all of the, the variation no matter how good they are. And so that's what makes the process approximate and computationally it is quite intensive and so that's where the computational aspect comes from. And so with ABC you simulate data under particular models, you then look at those models uh, and you see which of that simulated data under particular parameter values is closest to the observed data. And the model that shows the closest relationship to the observed data is the, uh, the, the likely uh, demographic model that you're going to go with. And also the parameter values within your model that are the closest to the observed value can tell you something about what, what sort of parameters have led to your um, simulated data being so close to the observed data. So simulated data from parameters closest to uh, the observed data uh, tells you something about the, the, the parameters that have, have, have led to your simulated data that is close to the observed data and will tell you or give you an estimate of things like affected population size and gene flow which is what we're concentrating on here. So first of all you start with your prior so this is the initial prior which can be fairly broad in this in this example um, and this prior is used to produce the posterior distribution so the posterior distribution is what we want to find out our estimate of a particular parameter. So the first iteration, I should mention here that the colored blocks are sections, so equal sections of a sequence. So that sequence could be a scaffold, that sequence could be a whole genome data. Here, uh, the, the uh, sections that we used were 200 kilobases long, and we went through the full scaffold one or so yeah, scaffold one of the whole genome data. So as you can see, the posterior distribution becomes tighter and tighter as we go through. Um, so you use your original prior to produce the first posterior distribution. Then this posterior distribution uh, from the first section is used as the prior for the next section of sequence, sequence data. And through doing this, you use uh, a tighter and tighter prior which causes your posterior distribution to become tighter and tighter and gives you a better estimate of your particular parameter. So here again shows getting tighter and tighter so EPABC is an iterative process and so you can go through the data many many times um, and so here we can see that by iteration 3 uh, we're getting a really tight distribution on our posterior distribution and this will give a really good um, estimate of the parameter. And again here just at the bottom we can see I've just labelled the different sections. So we've got section 1, section 2 and section 3. So each iteration is on the same uh, s sections of DNA, on the same sequence. It's just going through using the posterior distribution from the one before it as the prior. So using EPABC uh, we were able to find a, a migration rate between Lake Mazoko and the Astatilapia calyptra. So here I've just shown a topographic cross-section cross of the, um, 
the, the, the distance between Lake Mazoko and the Mbaka River. And as is to be expected, the gene flow going from Lake Mazoko to uh, the Asta tilapia calyptra is larger because it's down a hill, and so individuals are likely to have uh, escaped from Lake Mazoko through possible floodwaters down this gradient. But what is even more interesting is that there is a gene, there is gene flow, and there is a migration rate from the Embarker River or from the Asta tilapia calyptra population to Lake Mazoko. And this is an ongoing, ongoing um, migration rate, and it's clearly shown within the data. And this shows that novel genetic variation from the Acetilapia calyptra population that is widespread across Lake Mazoko, genetic variation from that population is being deposited into Lake Mazoko. Uh, this novel genetic variation may contain adaptive genes to um, depth, and so it's possible that this gene flow has allowed these um, two ecomorphs to diverge in sympatry because, because of this, this novel variation um, put into the system through the ongoing migration of Acetilapia calyptra. And so this novel variation could then be acted on by uh, adaptive selection, adaptive selection to um, the two different um, environments that were that are within the lake, littoral and benthic. But also what we saw through the use of uh, the program MIMAR, which is another um, Bayesian computation approach, was that there was a skew in migration rate between the two ecomorphs. And so there's a larger um, migration rate from the benthic ecomorph to the littoral ecomorph than there is to the littoral ecomorph to the benthic ecomorph. So this shows that the benthic ecomorph is less fussy when it comes to mating and will mate readily with the littoral ecomorph, whereas the littoral ecomorph is, sh is showing some assortative mating and, and possible sexual selection. Um, and this backs up evidence shown by Malinsky uh, et al. in their paper that there is some sort of assortative mating going on. They did mating trials that showed that littoral, um, littoral ecomorphs were, were showing this assortative mating. And this is what the, the uh, genetic data is also showing, that there is this assortative mating. And of course, along with the adaptive, um, adaptive selection on particular novel genes, this uh, assortative mating is only going to enhance selection and uh, allow for sympatric speciation to occur. And sympatric speciation has been, well, highlighted as a possible root cause for the sympatric speciation of um, cichlids in uh, the Lake Malawi uh, system. So the Lake Malawi radiation, um, sympatric speciation has been highlighted as one of the main possible causes for the, the radiations that we see today in Lake Malawi. So uh, that's uh, my project in a nutshell. So the approach of uh, Bayesian computation to genetic whole genome data from a previous study. And, and thank you to uh, Malinsky et al. for making their data public and allowing for everyone to use it. Um, I'd also like to thank Martin Jenner and Mark Beaumont for their help through the project. Um, and hopefully we can continue looking not only uh, at the Lake Mazoko morphs, but also include uh, individuals from other crater lakes such as Lake Atamba. Okay, thanks very much.